Ever since I relocated from Sydney to London four years ago, virtually everyone that I come across asks me the same question, which is, are you Australian? Followed by, what are you doing here? Well, the reason why I'm here is because London is so close to Europe and it gives me the chance of traveling right throughout Europe, gives me the chance of doing as much travel as I want to. Once I get to talk to people, they often ask me, well, what are your favorite places? And I've decided to make this series of videos to show my favorite places. And what better way of starting than the place that has been one of my favorites for longer than any of the others. In fact, I was a little boy of 11 years old when I fell in love with this city. So let's start this series of videos of my favorite places with Venice. Venice is totally unique. There are other cities that call themselves the Venice of the North and the Venice of the East. There's even a Venice of the Cotswolds. But Venice, the real Venice, is more than just a city with some canals running through the centre of it. The uniqueness of Venice can best be seen from above because it's not a city on land sitting next to a body of water. It's a city that sits in the middle of the sea. Well, not really the sea. It's the Venetian Lagoon, a vast expanse of shallow marshy water in the northwestern tip of the Adriatic. Venice is, in fact, a city made up of 117 little islands, lying a bit more than a mile offshore. 177 canals divide these islands and the city is interconnected by 409 bridges. And as if the geography of islands and canals wasn't enough to make it something special, there's the architecture that makes the place like a fairyland. There is no other city in the world like it.
You know, it's really difficult to describe Venice without going into cliched superlatives. Beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, spectacular, stunning. All these words can be applied to it. I think the best way to describe Venice is to say this. Because it was at the crossroads of East-West trade for most of the Middle Ages, the city became immensely wealthy and spectacularly powerful. This allowed the Venetians to line the city's canals with the grand palaces that we see today. And Venice's wealthiest citizens, as well as medieval pilgrims on their way to the Holy Land, paid for the churches that fill the city's squares. The Venetians collectively did something no other citizen body in Europe achieved. They glorified their city with a perfect blend of water, sunlight and architecture that produced one of the most beautiful places on earth. The main centre of the city is Piazza San Marco, with the Basilica of St Mark's San Marco and the magnificent Doge's Palace, or Palazzo Ducale. Napoleon called the piazza the finest drawing room in Europe. That, by the way, was just before he dethroned the Doge and killed off the 1,000-year-old independent republic and gave Venice to Austria. The piazza is where you can get an idea of how the Venetians deliberately designed a beautiful city for themselves. The Doge's palace is perfectly sited right on the main quay side. And from the Piazzetta in front of the palace, there is a view across St. Mark's Basin, or the Pacino, to Palladio's Church of San Giorgio Maggiore. And San Giorgio is turned to the perfect angle to make the view from the Piazzetta even more stunning. It's all a miracle of design. Another miracle of design is the view from the Academia Bridge, looking down the Grand Canal to Santa Maria del Salute. Now there wasn't a bridge here until the 19th century, but look at that view. Surely one of the most magnificent views in the world. The second major centre of the city is Rialto, Venice's commercial centre since about 700 AD. Once more, it's as if everything was designed for perfection. The Rialto Bridge is in the perfect spot to give stunning views up and down the Grand Canal. Looking west, there is an uninterrupted view of palaces all the way down to Palazzo Foscari in the distance. And looking east, there is a lovely picturesque view of the palaces that line one of the bends in the Grand Canal. Venice is so beautiful that even when one of its summer storms closes in, the city is still glorious. And as the sun sets, the city takes on a magical quality that words can't describe.
The downside of all this beauty and magnificence is of course the fact that everyone in the world wants to go and see it. This means that a city built to house a population of about 250,000 at its peak now has 3 million tourists a year tramping all over it. Venice is now at breaking point. In the summer, everywhere you look in the main areas, there are hordes and hordes of people. Thankfully, there are still quiet areas once you get away from Piazza San Marco and Rialto. You just need to go a couple of streets away from San Marco and you virtually have the place to yourself. Ignore the legions of tourists and what you see here is a marvel. Venice is the one place where you feel man created paradise on earth. Or, as John Julius Norwich called it, the paradise of cities.